and welcome back to the Nexus Gaming Series. I am Bahamut, your caster. On the left, we are going to be having Dunning Kruger Knights versus the Real Ultimate Mosh Pit. Sorry, I had to like look over there because I was just like, wait a minute, because these are a lot longer than I actually. I was just like, wait, it's Dunning Kruger Knights. Yeah, yeah, I got that one, but the Real Ultimate Mosh Pit. Yes, the Real Ultimate Mosh Pit. Wondering if they go into an ETC here, but. Before we get into that, let's discuss map bans. Uh, coin flip was won by uh, Dunning Kruger Knights. They went ahead and banned out Dragonshire. Uh, uh, Towers of Doom was banned out by the members of uh, Ultimate Mosh Pit. First map was chosen by uh, Dunning Kruger Knights, which is going to be that Volskaya Foundry for us. And then game number two is going to be Tomb of the Spider Queen. I don't know about you guys, but I am excited to get into this. This is a Division A matchup for the Nexus Gaming Series, and the first matchup of the evening, we will be having another one following this at 7.30. So we're going to have back-to-back -back matches. That one is going to be uh, Division C, Psycho Swarm versus Guys Gems. But Garrosh is going to be banned out here on the side of uh, the real Ultimate Mosh Pit. I mean, it's, it's one of those things that, I mean, it's... Tried and true ban. Uh, it's also one of those things that I think Garrosh is really powerful here, but it looks like Dunning Kruger Knight's not going to want to deal with that Medivh. That overall uh, vision that he, that he can provide to the map is extremely powerful, as well as the uh, the portals are just something that you can get right into that backline and absolutely decimate a team. But no one else takes decimate either. They always take Warlord's Challenge. But either way, first pick on the side of the real ultimate mosh pit. Ooh, I was actually going to talk about, uh, not Thrall, uh, Stukov here in the in this first slot. Been seeing a lot of priority under that, as well as the uh, the zone control. Seems to be uh, a favor a favorite for, for a lot of teams, but it's actually going to be that Thrall picked up for the side of uh, Real Ultimate Mosh Pit. I do think Thrall is extremely powerful here. We do see that uh, Crash Lightning build has been pretty powerful, and actually, as... Hey, Kaleo, how you doing? Thanks for coming by. Uh, as we saw in the, the games last night... Yeah, it was... Uh, Stark was playing on... Uh, Gilly, Gilly Shark, Stark was playing the, the Thrall, and, and actually used both builds, and was actually saying in Game 2, wish they had taken the Echoed, of, uh, echoed Elements. So curious to see what build it will be. Thrall can be played in that solo lane. Into the Blaze, though? Ooh, I don't know about that. Elieska, how you doing? Let's go DKK. All right. We already got some just people already cheering in the chat. Thank you for coming by. I hope you enjoy the stream. And you're also having a great day, too. Uh, but this is going to be the Blaze Duke off picked up on the side of uh, Dunning Kruger Knights. And I got to say, for their solo lane, I think that's strong. Blaze offers a lot on the point as well with control. The uh, Jet Propulsion in can be an extremely good setup for your team. You can then drop a, a, a Lurking Arm right underneath that, get that silence from Stukov, and then now we're going to be looking to see what their main tank will be, their, their, uh, and their kind of their... I would think that they're going to maybe go into like a Bursty Comp. We'll find out after the ban phase. Let's figure out these next two picks, though, for the members of Ultimate Mosh Pit. Hmm. They got the Thrall at first. I personally say you grab your main tank and... I would say also your healer. I like the idea of a Malfurion here, and then you can also take that ETC. Oh, okay, so they grab the Malfurion, but they're gonna actually gonna grab the Junkrat. I do like that. Displacement, high a high priority on a map like this where you can separate the team from each other very easily with those concussion mines. The other thing too is Rip Tire gets a lot of value. Let's go. We're, we're too good for mosh pits. Ooh. I like I like I just love the enthusiasm. Just Thank you. Thank you for bringing it. But we are going to be having a Diablo band out on the side of uh, Dunning Kruger Knights. They do not want to, uh, don't really want to deal with that. And especially on a map like this, there are quite a few areas to get that Shadow Charge in as well as the Overpower. Sets up the Malfurion pretty well. Junkrat can play off of that on, I, I, yeah, I agree with that. That band 100%. Uh, They're going to need a main tank. They're going to need some burst on the side of uh, Dunning Kruger Knights. <laughs> Otara, thank you for coming by. You guys should be drafting. Hey, Kaleo. Hey, Kubi. Oh my god, just everyone's everyone's showing up for the games. All right. Uh, <laughs> Drinking around, how you doing? Hey. Uh, Maya going to be banned out, though. Yeah, with the Stukov, I can't agree with that 100%. I was thinking along the lines, and, it, you know, I wouldn't say it's fallen off, but I, I, I think it's just kind of 
not in a lot of people's minds because there's the Maev, there's the Genji, there's the Hanzo, which I'm actually curious to see if we're going to get a Genji or a Hanzo here. I do like the Hanzo quite a bit. And then on top of that, what I was thinking is the Grey Main. Um, or you could run a Grey Main uh, Li Ming. I do think that there are quite a few uh, options to go ahead and get some dive in with the Blaze. Then you have the Silence from the Stukov. You've got Grey Main to dive in, but they're actually going to pick up their main tank here. I, I actually, I really like this play. They're going to they're gonna kind of flex on their last Assassin. I think that's a really strong uh, opportunity for them. Oh my god. All the cool people are in here. That is, I'm glad that that is, that is what we're kind of labeling this stream as. We're here for DKK. Oh, that's it? Superstar. <laughs> All right, uh, Joanna going to be picked up on the side of the real ultimate mosh pit. What do they play? Do they play their solo lane as a thrall, or do they pick up something here to go into that blaze? And it's going to be that Sonya. Okay, they'll go ahead and pick up the Sonya to go into the blaze. I like that so far. They're not going to have... Because I was thinking, I was like, you could pick up another assassin. Like, even then, you could go Malfeel in this in this uh, situation, but you are opening, opening a lot of avenues... Um, for that gray main leaming to get uh, some burst into some squishier targets. Travel support. Oh. Oh, Kaleo, are you going to dorm? You coming to dorm, Kaleo? I mean, I'm sure I actually know this and I could. I, I think I actually. S pretty sure I saw your name on lists. Okay. Oh. Okay, all right, let's get back into this draft. Uh, Dunkruger Knights, they're going to be needing... I think they'll, they'll go ahead and pick up some extra damage here. I like the idea of the Li Ming. I like the idea of the resets. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. A lot of good poke damage that comes out from Chromie. Very, like, you can just play around the um, charge points. I, it's not They're not beacons, I don't think. Um, I can't remember. Capture points either way. Uh, Chromie can go ahead and, from range, deal quite a bit of damage into a team from that just the poke that's available. So I really like that option for the team. I think that the Slowing Sands can be a huge asset for them. Spring time. Thank you for that host. Uh, but let's go ahead and we're going to go ahead and get right into this. This will be game number two. I cannot wait. So as we look at this, into the later half of the game, I think Dun & Kruger Knights has a extremely powerful build. Early game might be a little difficult for them. They've got a lot on the side of uh, the real ultimate mosh pit. But we'll find out in just a second. Let's get into this. On the left-hand side, we are going to be having Dun & Kruger Knights with uh, Shrek going to be on the... Romy. Sorry, I thought I read that wrong for a second. Uh... Apple Eater going to be on that Blaze. Uh, Goki Burry going to be on the Gray Main. Ralph Sue going to be on the. Oh my god, I'm blanking on it. Varian and Hotaru going to be on the Stukov. Brain just having farts on these names all of a sudden. And on the right, we are going to be having the members of the real Ultimate Mosh Pit with uh, Svin on the Malfurion. Uh, Dingstrom going to be on the Joanna. Uh, Yadaloya going to be on that. Sonya, oh god, I'm, I'm splitting all over the place here. Uh, we're gonna have Zarin gonna be on the Thrall and uh, Dendi Smasher gonna be on that Junkrat. Let's go ahead and look at these talents as I just stumbled all over the introductions. We're gonna go ahead and have the uh, solo laners actually split off here. We're gonna be having the Blaze in the top lane. Sonya will be in that bottom, so at this point they might have to swap that out a little bit. But either way, mid lane is where all the fun will be as we do have uh, Romy getting a couple stacks here and there. Or at least gonna be trying for him. Um, as we are going to be having, it looks like a four-man rotation going to be happening into this top lane. Apple, you're going to have to back off and probably rotate down into bottom, as Greymane is going to be covering it for now, but I would think that you might want your Greymane in the four-man rotation. Doesn't look like we're going to be having any damage connecting just yet. At least anything detrimental to the teams, but... Mid lane rotation going to be coming out. Overall, we're going to be seeing this back and forth. We should have a swap into the bottom lane. I don't know if Goki can sustain against the Sonya as Ralph's do does dive in. That will be poking onto the to the Sonya, but not going to be enough to go, to really make her to force her too far back. 
Level one though, we can just peek through some of these towns. We are going to be having uh, Varian with the Lion's Maw at level one. So I'm curious if we get Smash or Taunt. I like the idea of of the Taunt, but then again, you can drop a, a Malfurion Root right underneath that, and that could be problematic as uh, Goki's getting chased out here. The rest of the team going to be respond responding to this as well. Ralph's dude going to be getting pulled in at this time. Zarin not really going to let them out as they do have Sonya finishing out that camp. The Pustra will go out on to Varian, but will it be enough? And it won't as first kill of the game will be going over to the members of the real ultimate mosh pit. Meanwhile, though, in mid lane, we do have Dendi Smasher going into Schwick and Tara is just going to be helping out, just making sure that they don't lose out on any health as well as just um, push up this lane. Once we do have Apple Eater in that top lane, rotation is going to be coming out. Well, some poke damage coming out from this Chromie, so that's that's the one thing that I'm curious to see as, as we get into this later half is... I wonder if uh, Dunning Kruger might struggle a little bit at the beginning until they get to some of these these necessary talents. And there actually is going to be the Taunt Varian. See how that sets them up here. Um, with the first control point activating in the next 30 seconds, that also is going to be Chromie with five stacks on the, uh, the Sand Blast there. So slowly powering that up, as well as going ahead and grabbing the, uh, the Dragon's Eye at level one. We also have those Brawn Talents at level 4 for Chromie as well. Meanwhile, though, Greyman going to go ahead and grab this camp to push in the top lane. Uh, Zarin went ahead, I think, and already grabbed that with, I think, some help of the Junkrat. They're going to need to respond to this at some point, as they do have Blaze in that top lane going into the Brawl, as it uh, looks like they do get the root on to the Chromie. This isn't looking too good, and that will be Chromie falling as this control point is activated and being held over for the members of the real Ultimate Mosh Pit. Top lane is going to be Apple Eater versus Zarin, and getting pushed back a little bit here, going to play by those gates. Doesn't want to go too far out. They do have uh, Sony in bottom lane pushing that back out. Maybe looking for sevens here. There is the slow and silence. They're just going to be holding this over. Junkrat has spread themselves out quite a bit around here, but Chromie going to be having that, that vision with that time trap is really, really useful for the team, knowing that there is going to be that, that Junkrat mine right there as they do want to enter into this. So Junkrat and uh, Thrall are in the top lane, so it looks like Ralph Stu and some of the members want to invade onto this. They need to play around kind of the, the Junkrat toys that are left under the ground as they actually go ahead and just take the root. Got that taunt onto the Malfurion there for a second. Okay, they're going to hold over the point, and it looks like they actually contested it at 99%. Get it themselves, but here's the thing. Sevens have been achieved. They actually rotate their Sonya up from bottom lane. We're all still in top. We also have Chromie just poking in here and there. So they're going to go ahead and invade it this time. Root will be going down. They also get the taunt onto the Malfurion. A lot of damage is going to be going out. There's the Jet Propulsion as well, but Stukov will be falling at this time. Not going to be long for this world as Dinkstrom is going to be trying to get the slow onto the Grey Main. Not going to be enough for them to get that kill. They do get the kill onto Stukov. Grab back over this control point. Ralph Stu, I think, want to go back in on this, but... Trigger left protector already out. They actually get the taunt onto the Sonya. A bunch of damage coming out. The Junkrat Mine will separate a couple of these people. That will go ahead and get the blaze as well. Goki Buri going to be trying to get out of here. Taking some damage from that Junkrat. Protection status from Ralph Stu. Going to be keeping them alive. As it looks like that will be the first trigger left protector going over in favor for the members of the real ultimate mosh pit. They start to just kind of burn this down. And they do a decent job of it. Chrome will be able to poke out from that, from that back line with the uh, Bronze Talon as well as the uh, Dragon's Eye. But we are just going to be having the uh, Trigger Left Protector rotate into the top lane, get the clear onto that. Oops, excuse me. Well, we have a little bit of a fight here in bottom lane. They're all taking some damage. They're not going to be getting the kill they're looking for on the side of Dunning Kruger Knights. As the Trigger Left Protector opens up this top lane. And this is the one big thing that I, I always try and note with a lot of these teams, and I, and I love this play, is they, they worked a little bit on mid, and then they opened up top. And they're going ahead and making sure that... And they make it a further retreat path. They're going to make it more difficult for them to sustain in the next fight, which will be in that top lane if they can take out the well here, which you can already see them prioritizing. It just gives them a little bit of an advantage, and it also pushes them closer and actually into 10, as we are going to be having Leap out from Sonya, Blessed Shield from the Joanna, uh, Sunder out from the Thrall, Riptire from the Junkrat, and we have Twilight Dream from that Malfurion. Quite a few good talents picked up here on the side of the real ultimate Mosh Pit. No Mosh Pit, though. Because there's no ETC. But at this point, we do see the members of Dunning Kruger Knights rotate themselves across this map, making sure they just pick up as much experience as possible. But you also see them on the mini map. They're not playing past that halfway mark, which is extremely... It's, it's, it's a smart play. 
as they get chased into mid. I just missed it. I was like, oh man, there's there's a lot of commotion up here. I was just talking about how great it was that they're not playing too far up the map because they don't get picked off, but that will be very getting killed here. Also going to be, uh, so six seconds on him, but that also will be the mid fort falling at this time. Joanna is just going to get stopped as they try and poke onto this, but they're not going to be able to stop it in time. Pushing them a little bit further up in experience on the side of the real ultimate mosh pit. And this is, it's getting to that point in the game where they really, really need tens on the side of Johnny Kruger Knights, but they don't want to go too far out in the lanes because they don't want to get rotated or ganked, as that kind of did happen to, uh, I believe, Ralph's do in that mid lane. So they're just going ahead. They're going to grab some camps, prepare themselves a little bit for the uh, the next big left protector as the camp, I think, leashed on to Apple Eater there and just pulled it so far off the point. We have the Condemn going in. I'm just, I'm kind of like, I'm waiting. I'm like, are we going to get an in? We currently have Ralph's Stew going in for the flank. Going to go ahead and get the charge and taunt onto the Thrall at this time. We do have Sunder going to be coming out, splitting some of the members here. But a decent amount of poke damage coming out from that Chromie onto that Thrall. They're really just making sure they wear them down. The healing totem hasn't been used, though, yet from, uh, from that Thrall. Is that, that med pack healing totem? I actually need to figure out the, the technical name for that. But either way, it's still being held. They do get tens, though, on the side of uh, Dunning-Kruger Knights. So they're actually going to be having the uh, shield wall, if I'm correct. Yes. Uh, we have go for the throat, uh, slowing stance from the Kromi, we have bunker from the blaze, and we are also going to be having the massive shove from that Stukov. So the single target disengage. Curious to see which um, which they'll be prioritizing if they're going to be trying just to pull uh, push the the Joanna out of position and open up that back line a little bit more so they're a little bit more squishy to some of the options that they have on the side of Dun Kruger Knights. Or if they go ahead and just, you know, they just solo out a single target and then they just, you know, walk over and just burst that one person down and, and go from there, that single target pick. Can be really, really big for a team. So it looks like we just have uh, Sonia scattering this out a little bit. That's the team rotating up. No one. They're just positioning right around. They want to take that fort, but it doesn't look like it's going to be happening. The other thing to note, though, they rotate down into this mid lane and the real ultimate mosh pit. They are going to be picking up a uh, 13 talent tier with that. So not not going to be like, ooh, you can't fight them, period. But it is, it's a 13 talent tier. You, you know, it is a little bit extra advantage. And it looks like at this time, they do kind of want to take that fight. Slowing Sands and the Lurking Arm on top of each other. No one pulled into it just yet, as the Junkrat will be utilizing the, uh, the lamp. Or excuse me. Oh, God. I'm blanking on the name again. Uh, his trap. Just to scout out a little bit here as they just position themselves in this mid. They're not going to be going in at this time. Iron's going to be used. There is going to be a leap. They get the Condemn, and that is a huge blow up with the follow up. Junk Rat Rip Tire. That will be Greymane falling. Blaze is going to be falling as well, and the Varian is going to be the only one left as Dendy Smasher going to go ahead and get right over the wall. They dive in, and I think this might be Ralph Stew falling as well. They get the Concussion Mine into the root, and that will be. Five members taken down by the members of the Real Ultimate Mosh Pit. They go ahead and take out the top lane fort, and they're also just putting their Malfurion right on this point to go ahead and just capture this Trigloff Protector. They're not going to be able to contest the point, but they definitely will be able to contest the push. Everyone will be back up in time for this. They don't have that 13 talent tier, but the other thing too is that two of the members will be in this Trigloff Protector, so they can kind of maybe just poke from a little bit of a distance. They do have that Chromie for that. Greymane does have some range. They'll have to kind of just play around it with the, with the rest of the members here. As it looks like... Okay. They are going to be pushing up that top lane. And the big question is if they try and end off this, or if they find an opening to end off of it. That's that's the one thing I'm really curious to find out here. Junkrat going to be getting Ralph's due over the wall here. Protection status going to be coming out from the Varian. Root going to be right underneath them. No damage... At least nothing fatal at this time. We do have some poke coming up from Chromie once again. Just really quickly want to note, they are at 41 out of the 60 stacks for that for that baseline quest. Poke damage is going to be coming out onto the Trigloff Protector. They wore down the gate. They're going to set their sights on this keep at this time. I don't know. Well, they've got quite a bit of damage on the Trigloff Protector, but kind of splitting it between the uh, keep and the member there as we have Ralph's You're taking so much damage. Riptar going to be coming out at this time. Going to be actually hitting... Taro there, not going to be getting the kill, but putting them quite low as that will be. The keep falling in the top lane. Trigla Protector will be falling on top of that. Take out the well as well. And uh, I don't think they fight after this. They actually got to go ahead and dive in onto uh, 
Dinkstrom there, and it's not going to be a kill as the Iron Skin does pop out. 16 talent to your advantage in favor for the members of the real ultimate mosh pit. 13s were achieved, but that is going to just be... This camp picked up, 16's achieved, and they're going to rotate around this map and have control. I, th at this point, they can either bush party. I thought they were rotating over to this camp. All right, uh, they can either bush party or they can just kind of rotate up and push push around the map. Maybe even open up bottom a little, bottom lane a little bit more if they wanted to. The next uh, trick left protector will be spawning down there. Now, it's about, I want to say, like a minute away, maybe a minute and a half away from, from the announcement for it. So we do have just some rotations around this map going to be picking up some you know camps here make sure they try and get a little bit closer to that 16 talent tier mid lane will be crashing quite soon so they're going to be able to pick that up top lane was grabbed as well um and they will have that catapult pressure stacking there and so they're going to need to deal with that and this is actually a really really good place for the members of the real ultimate mosh pit to be in mostly because of the fact that the next uh, trig left protector will be in bottom top lane has catapult pressure consistently there's no real global aspect from the members of Dunning Kruger Knights to to kind of just leave up there and then just you know uh jump down into bottom lane Dahaka not a lot of events in this map Falstead not with the way that they had drafted I like their draft I'm not saying you know they oh they should have taken a global I'm just saying the way that this map is right now with the catapult pressure in the top lane Blaze will be up there till probably they really need him or at least when the team decides to rotate down at this point, Blaze can just push up as much as they can to make sure the catapult pressure won't be there when the uh, objective pops. We are going to be having the Junkrat mine coming out. Junkrat will actually be getting blown up at this time. Big pick for them on the side of Dunning Kruger Knights. They are going to get the slow onto Zarin here. Sunder are going to be coming out. They actually have the Joanna, or so, excuse me, the Sonya leaping in. Varian will be falling this time, so one for one trade. Huge massive shove, which actually is interrupted by the silence from the uh, Malfir in there, Condemn comes out, but the uh, time stop was there from the Chromie. We have Apple Eater who came in at this time. Bugger going to be coming out as well. Chromie going to be trying to dump some sand on some of these members as it looks like Blaze is going to be falling here. The two for one trade. They got that Junkrat, but unfortunately it wasn't enough to keep them. They didn't have enough momentum to keep going. Blaze rotated in and unfortunately wasn't able to help the friendly team as they do rotate into this top lane they're gonna need to go ahead and clear this out the next trig love protector will be activatable in this bottom lane but with the 17 seconds that are available they're gonna go ahead on the side of the real ultimate mosh pit grab the support camp just have that extra sustain for when it comes to this next fight as varian looks to uh achieve 16 in mid with the team doing the same thing in top and they're actually just gonna back off at this time Regroup. Chromie did finish the level one stacking talent. Only needs three more uh, sandblasts as well. That's another thing I want to note. Only needs three more sandblasts. I'm going to have that clone to come out. Um, didn't take here and there, so not going to be having that. But this will be the trig love. At least the beacon held over in favor for the members of the real ultimate mosh pit. I'm, like, I'm just getting, like, I'm getting closer and closer to my mic. Hotoro going to be actually in a bad spot. Going to be getting caught out by the Sonya there as there will be the taunt going out. But that won't be enough as Chromie will be falling as well. That will be the very end on top of that. Blaze going to be going ahead and getting the jet propulsion out of here. Getting some slow, but they go ahead and dive onto them. And that will be Blaze falling. Loki going to be getting out of here. But that will be the trigger lock protector in favor for the members of the real ultimate mosh pit. Meanwhile, though, top lane needs to be addressed as it looks like... We do have that catapult pressure reaching, but not enough to go ahead and get the shields knocked down. But with the trig left protector and four dead, they're going to go ahead and rotate to this bottom, push onto this heap actually, get their own catap get more catapult pressure in bottom as well as open up a lane for that trig left protector just to basically siege through. At this point. Two lanes are open for them to have a win condition here, but all five members will be back in time to defend against this trigger protector. Blaze is the last to pop just now. And I won't say this is their last defense. Teams can not win off of... I don't know. I I casted a game last night where I was just like, that's it. And it wasn't it, and it got flipped. So I don't want to speak for a team here. I don't know if they... What, what are they... Oh, they're rotating people in and out of the trigger Club protect, protector. Um... But yeah, they're going to go ahead and siege down bottom lane a little bit. Only finishing that questing talent. Just trying to poke out at this time. Jiggler Protector diving onto that Chromie. 
Invade coming in from the team here as we do have Chromie going into the Nexus at this time. Blaze going to drop that bunker. Trig left protector working on a couple of these members. No one really focusing onto the core, but Blaze going to get goomba by the Sonya. That leap will be ending their life, and that is going to be the core starting to fall as the trig left protector falls extremely low. They're trying to burn it down, but I don't think it's going to be enough as they drop the trig left protector. They knock some people away. Varian going to be falling here, but that will be game number one going over to the real mosh pit. GG, well played. Oh no, 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 I want to be ref. Maybe? Tomb of the Spider Queen. Uh. Uh. B -b 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 okay, give me one second. I can't type to them or see what they're saying, so I just really, really quickly want to get to a message out to them. Um. Dunning versus at. Um, I just at least ping both teams and let them know that I can't pause or anything because you can't see, well, you can't, there it is. You can't see any of that stuff. Um, I accidentally set myself to spectator, not referee. My apologies, but we're going to have the same bands uh, coming out, but we do actually have Maya being picked up here first on the side of uh, Dunning Krieger Knights. Do a Spider Queen. Maev gets quite a bit of value. There's a lot of really interesting areas for them to uh, get the Umbra Bind, as well as there's some really good... Uh, Areas to just blink over walls, but that will be a Junkrat Stukov on the side of the real ultimate mosh pit. Now the question I have, do they get the Diablo? I personally like the idea of grabbing a Diablo and a Malfurion here. I think the Malfurion, Diablo, and Maev synergy would be extremely strong. A little bit better with the Stukov is, is something that we've I've seen in a lot of teams, but I think they're honestly interchangeable. That's personally what I would like to see out of the start of their draft. Uh, if at least if I was if I was the drafter, um, that'd be kind of the route that I'm going on. But Joanna for the grouping, and they're going to go ahead and grab the Malfurion. Okay, so the Condemn going to be going ahead and just getting that that pulled together, so it will be a little bit better for the Maiev. Also, the Unstoppable is pretty beneficial. You don't get any sort of slows or anything. You can also walk right through any sort of um, Stukov. Uh, Lurking arm, any sort of silence from that, so that will be a nice way to kind of mitigate that if you do need to kind of just, if you're getting blocked by it and you're like, well, I got to get to the other side of my gate or something, so you're just like, all right, well, yeah, now now we're just going to go ahead and pop our iron skin and just walk right out of here, but let's go ahead and get the ban here. Okay, it's going to be Hanzo. Vision's powerful. Scatter arrows can be really, really beneficial for them. Mobility's huge. I wonder if we get a Genji ban. Hmm. I don't know. It feels a little specific. They need a main tank. You could just, yeah. This is going to say. They need a main tank. You could just take out the Diablo. The synergy just with Stukov would be too much. And then they also have first pick after this. So why not? Um, yeah. It, it makes sense. So you're going to be picked up once again, though. Curious if it's going to be a leap. I actually, that was that was really cool to see, to have that leap, Sonya. And sorry to Apple Eater that you got goomba at the end there. Hmm. They kind of need wave clear. I don't know, Junkrat, sort of, kind of, not really. They also need a main tank. I don't think what you're going to be putting with this team. I like the idea of a Genji. We do extra like, mosh pit. Hmm. Wouldn't be horrible. There's the ETC. Okay. ETC makes sense to me for their main tank. They've got some decent setup for mosh pit, but what do they get here on the side of uh, Umbral Bind? Kinky. Is that not what the talent's called? Umbra Bind is is the is is her W. Yeah, because the E is the blank and the Q is the knife throat. 
All right, but they're going to be they're they're going to need wave clear and they're going to need a solo lane to go into that Sonya. The Blaze is available. We didn't actually see it lane into the Sonya last game too much. It was actually split in top from the team. I still like the Blaze here and then honestly, I I like a Gul'dan. That's me. I like the idea of you condemn them, you um Oh god, I just had the name I just had it corruption. Oh my, that's not it. Corruption? That's not right. Oh, I'm, I'm, forget, I'm blanking out on this talent, but they're actually going to go ahead. Okay, so they get the D.Va and a hero we have not seen in quite some time. We're actually going to be seeing the Vala coming out. Okay, all right, interesting. Hmm. <laughs> This last pick, though. What are they going to pile on top of their mosh pit? I still like the I, I like the idea of a Genji here. I think it could work for them. They could pick up a Jaina. Actually, ooh, I like the idea of a Jaina. If they do, like, the, the four-man rotation or four-hero rotation, uh, Jaina has really, really good wave clear for them. I think it would work out. And in between her cooldowns, Junkrat has the clear with his Q. I like that idea. I think she'll get a lot of value, as well as the setup for the ETC Mosh with Ring of Frost. Ooh. Oh, boy. All right. Um. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Uh, all right, so that's going to be a Phoenix, and the reason I kind of scream is I'm like, Mosh Pit, Clan, uh, Cranet, Cranet Cracker, uh, Planet Cracker, um, yeah, Mosh Pit, Planet Cracker, that could be huge, I don't, I just gotta say, like, this, this is exciting, let's get into this. No, you got the name right doesn't mean it's not kinky, though. Galeo, thank you. <laughs> All right. All right, let me compose myself as we get into game number two here. On the left-hand side, we're going to be having Dun and Kruger Knights with Hotaro going to be on the Malfurion. Apple Eater going to be on that Diva. Ralph Stu going to be on the Joanna. Uh, Shwek going to be on the... Uh, uh, Vala there. I just honestly like the skin. I was just like, Ooh, what character? And uh, Goki Berry going to be rounding. Goki Buri going to be rounding out the team on that Mayev. And Alieska, thank you for that follow. I do appreciate that. Sorry it didn't go off. I went ahead and swapped to that casting mode. But either way, on the right, we're going to be having up one game, the real ultimate mosh pit with Zarin going to be on the Phoenix. Uh, Dingstrom going to be on that ETC. Uh, Sven going to be on the Stukov. Dendi Smasher on the Junkrat once again. And uh, Yatoya going to be on the... Sonya. We do have a little bit of a fight breaking out. I, I hit the, the large zoom out when I meant to actually pull up the talents here, so I was just like, wait, hold on a second here. Alright, we are going to be having this small mid lane engage as we do have Sonya splitting off into that bottom end. Looks like the solo lane up against that will be Apple Eater once again. Going to be that D.Va. I don't know people play D.Va. I didn't know people play D.Va. Hmm. One of those things, it comes out here and there, and, and I definitely think there can be some some huge synergies with that. So we'll see what kind of value they get. It. I'm also really curious if they're going to be going into that nuclear option. Um, seen it here and there, but curious if it's going to be uh, their priority. And we're not actually going to be having many stacking talents at level 1. The only main one to note is going to be uh, on that ETC with that proc rock. Going to become a much beefier boy as that does progress here. Though these, uh, these four-man rotations between mid and top are looking pretty good on the side of the real ultimate mosh pit. Definitely making sure that they are picking up the gems and also putting quite a few of them onto their main tank. Making sure that they, is, is the hardest person for that, for that to drop off of. Because it looks like they go ahead and they keep getting this clear and rotating around. Meanwhile, though, they do have uh, Apple Eater pushing into Yatoya which went ahead and grabbed the uh, Siege Camp and bottom, but some of the members will be rotating down at this time. They start to get the Condemn. I don't know if Yatoya will have the out as they get the Umbral Bind. That is going to be another pull in. 
and that will be not the first kill of the game going over to Dunning Krieger Knights, unfortunately. I was like, hey, you guys got this. Uh, unfortunately, it's not going to be happening. As we do have a uh, ETC Stukov mid, but bottom lane, we're going to be having a fight over this uh, siege camp as it looks like they managed to chase them off. Junkrat going to knock off the Joanna. Ironskin is going to be used, but it won't be enough to get them onto that point quick enough. So siege camp going to be actually stolen, then stolen away. And then uh, we do have a... Uh yeah, Siege Camp pushing bottom. Rotation's going to be coming right back out. All right. Mid lane, though, going to be pushed up a little bit. We do currently have uh, Goki in the top lane versus uh, Big Strum. We once again have D.Va. Global... Global vo voice lines for everyone to make sure that she everyone knows that she is back in the fight. Uh, Dendi Smash are going to be go working into uh, Eve at this time as Yutoya is going to be getting is going to be getting that camp as I miss and I apologize. The Phoenix falling in the mid lane, top lane though. Okay, I was like Dingstrom, you're a little you're a little out there for a couple of those members to be up there, but not going to be a problem as they did deposit quite a few of their gems just to note as well making sure that they don't drop them on the side of the real ultimate mosh pit though it's 47 in favor for the members of Dunning Krieger Knight so they have the potential for a turn in very soon even with that full charge Dendi Smash I, I gotta say one thing really quickly the junk ride on this on this map is an absolute nightmare to deal with, especially like any sort of point turn in maps, uh, Towers of Doom, Curse Hollow. I absolutely just hate dealing with the junk rats there because they just they can continually poke forever. It feels like. Um, but this also will be turn in availability for the members of the real ultimate mosh pit. Goki very going to be getting the pull in. There will be the sounds out from the Stukov. Going to be actually pushing a couple of these members back as we do have Ralph Stu going ahead and just pulling some of them away from the gate. Also just into that top lane a little bit as they work their way through this. Bruiser camp pushing into mid. Now, turn in is available for both team. A lot of the members have been pushing in this mid on the side of the real ultimate mosh pit. Dunkrieger Knights. This Vala gonna go ahead and get the uh, the vault forward, and it will be enough just to just just skate right through the uh, power slide from the ETC there. As Ralph's gonna go ahead and get a little bit of a turn in. A couple of the members have the availability. I think they're setting up to get that Diva to turn in the majority of. That 21 there, as Phoenix and a couple of members will be, I think, racing this, and uh, that will be first Webweaver going over in favor for the members of the all real ultimate mosh pit. Now, seven to seven, no real big talent tier advantage, no big split in experience, just the objective in favor for the members of the real ultimate mosh pit. Dunning Krieger Knights, though, going to be advancing in this top lane. Sven, not in the best place, going to be getting. Ooh, the root's going to be right underneath. They actually had the, the Umbral Bind for a second, but it's not going to be connecting as this will be the Lurking Arm going out. They also have that ex that larger AoE at level 1, so that definitely pushes them further back here as they want to defend their top lane as much as possible. The one thing is, I, and the reason I say that is because it's boss lane. It's a win condition. A lot of people consider this map, it's so hard to win without objective or boss, and you'll usually stack objective and boss and push into top lane through what is usually a keep that's already gone, but either way... I gotta say, it's it's definitely the, the play that we see a lot of teams make as Ralph's is not going to be doing too well, going to be falling in this push, and they continue to actually stay in top lane and push harder as they will be able to take out the well, and I think the fort with the uh, about third health web weaver here, Goki Buri, not going to be in the best spot, there will be a root, oh, the junk rat mine actually saving them, or wait, didn't, maybe there was a blink, I might have missed that, I was just like, didn't, Go over the didn't my have go over the wall there, but that will be the fort falling in the top lane. Mid lane was cleaned out. Bottom lane though, Yatoya is going to be falling to Apple Eater and Shwek, and they are able to get a turn in one and also take out quite a few gems from the members of the real ultimate mosh pet as they push in this mid and they will get, be get they will be getting tens from this. Now, the thing that they can play off of this though, they do ooh, actually they won't be getting the fort nor tens. They need a minion or two at this point. That will be tens turned over, but they have Sonya who is just coming back from death. I wonder, do they try and play into this? Do they try and sneak a turn in? They're definitely scouting out top, bottom there. I think they're doing the exact same thing. Mid bottom lane, they're going to be pushing in a little bit, but 
do currently have this advance in mid. As we do also have the, the tens achieved, I also want to note that uh, Dinkstrom is one regen globe away from finishing that proc rex deck, but we are going to have a condemn onto a couple of these members. The rule will be coming out from the Malfurion. Junkrat, Cushing Grenade's going to be a lot, but they focus onto the ETC. And the big thing is, is can they zone these 21 gems away? Because that's huge for them. It's a lot on the side of the real ultimate mosh pit. And the other thing to note is that Apple Eater got that turn in, so they have ETC dead. Blessed Shield going to be coming out from that Joanna. But the blink, will, the warp will be enough. That will be the meme beam coming out from Phoenix. Just shooting across the map. Maybe is maybe they're going for that keep damage. Uh, it doesn't do damage to buildings. Uh, at this point, though, Sonya going to be a little far forward. Okay, nope. Going to be rotating right back off. Okay, they don't get the Umbral Bind. Oh, extra they do. Not going to be enough, though, as they do need to get this clear in this bottom lane. They want to try and get as much out of their web weavers as possible. Though I would say top lane might be the priority as ETC did finish those proc rock stacks. They do push up bottom lane a little bit. Diva going to be rotating out. Okay. Going to be going into the mid and I think top just for that soaking experience. Real quick though, just to go through some of these uh, these heroics from left to right, we're going to have the uh, Warden's Cage, Twilight Dream, uh, Reign of Vengeance, Pew Pew from the Diva, and we also saw earlier that Bless Shield from the Joanna. And on the right-hand side, we're going to be having that Mosh Pit from the Real Ultimate Mosh Pit. Leap as well. We have the Planet Cracker, Junkrat with the uh, Rip Tire, as well as the Master Chef from the Suke Office. We do have a fight starting to break out. Mosh Pit going to be going out onto one member. It looks like they do get the Vala here. There will be the Warden's Cage coming out. That is also going to be the Junkrat getting that mine. But Sven, oh, not able to get out. So they trade one for one at this point. Healer for Damage Dealer. Dendi Smasher a little bit low. Doesn't look like they're able to chase this as Apple Eater is getting on to... The Phoenix, but is actually going to get pushed back as it looks like they might be getting chased in by the team. Going to go ahead and get knocked back. This is not the best spot for Apple Eater to be. There will be a root right there. They also, they get the upper bind on the Phoenix actually. And I don't think there's a blink at this time, but the concussion mine will be enough from Dendi Smasher to make sure that those members are pushed away. Zarin getting that shield back. Going to get some poke damage out with that laser, but that will be a three-man slow with the Joanna. No mosh pit available from Dingstrom at this time. Diva going to have that mech once again. They're starting to chase this. Dendi Smasher and some of the team getting the uh, the Pustule from Sven. And that will be the team healed up. They trade one for one in, in damage or in, in deaths. But here's the thing. They got enough for another turn in. They just had a turn in. So they pushed up the waves. They got some fight. The really big thing that they get from this too, top lane stacked so much. So by getting this turn in, they'll be able to push that out without having to rotate out. And they could potentially rotate in this bottom lane, create more pressure. We'll have to see what they play here as they do get the turn in. <laughs> just that, just, just Ali Esco. Thank you. Just like the emos. I don't know why, but they, they just, they just got me so good there. Thank you. Uh, Dings are going to be actually sliding in at this time. They want to invade and try and take this. I think they have the knockback. Sonya going to be leaping in. Planet Cracker going to be coming out. Not going to be getting the kill they're looking for. Reign of Vengeance is going to be stalling us out, but that will be the point captured. Apple Eater not in the best spot. That will be D.Va falling. Webweaver's descending, but they do lose their D.Va, and they also lose their camp in mid. That will be pressuring the Webweaver there. Real quick in bottom. It's going to get some value, but Sonya is already rotating out. Going to go ahead and start working on that. As they start to just try and turn this Webweaver phase against them, the real ultimate mosh pit trying to set themselves up here for at least a gate during the opponent's uh, Webweaver phase. Top lane, though, a little healthy. Going to be just sieging quite well. Not going to not gonna be getting a whole lot of value there, I do not think. Um... As they do start to rotate out, and I think that they're starting to worry about it themselves. As I was just like, wait a minute, I might be wrong on that. And I think they might have had the same thought as that starting to siege up and stack quite a bit. As you can see, there are quite a few minions as well as the Webweaver pushing into this top lane. And they go ahead and they burn that down, and that will be the Webweaver phase ending. And the one thing to know is they only need about seven gems on the side of uh, the, real, the real ultimate mosh pit for... Webweaver turn in. Are they going to boss? Doesn't look like it. All right. But they will go ahead and do the one thing that is safe, and it is turn as many gems as possible while you just have Sonya collect the rest that you need because um, there has been quite a bit of stacking in that bottom lane. Meanwhile, though, they are going to be rotating Gokiburi down just to scout this out, make sure that they're not going to be getting that turn in with the Sonya because that is where all the gems do lie, or at least all the ones, uh, just about all the ones necessary. I think it's like one, it was one short, but either way, Rotation going to be coming out from this bottom lane, looking to just set themselves up to just 
scout this out. Vitalia gonna be just trying to get that turn in. Ralph's do gonna have the interrupt, and they know that the longer this goes, it's just... They're trying to delay this out as long as possible, but they have to keep moving in and spending so many assets, but the body blocking out from Zarin will be enough as they do go ahead and get that turn in. No turnaround on this. The Iron Skin was used. Web Weavers will descend quite a ways down top lane. I will note that. Looks like they're going to be pushing into mid? Pushing into top? What are, you, what are you guys doing? What's the play here? Um, it looks like, though, they are pushing up mid. That will be, I would say, fairly even with where his top will land. Bottom lane is going to be pushing out quite far, so I don't think they're going to get a whole lot of value with that. But they're setting their sights on mid lane. Maybe even get a keep here. They actually get the knockback. They're going to be trying to uh, get some damage out onto this web weaver with that D.Va nuclear bomb. Not going to be getting a whole lot as they actually... Sonya going to be leaping in as well as the Junkrat Riptire going off at the exact same time. So that will be a kill going over in favor. Moshpit coming out. Going to be interrupted right away. Not even connecting. Root going to be underneath that. This will be a mid lane off the team. Off the team. Apparently, Sonya didn't like the, the, the leap uh, Riptire combination. I don't know. I, didn't I don't follow that. But either way, that will be 16 achieved for the members of the Re-Ultimate Moshpit. Dunning-Krieger Knights... One level behind, not too far. They did get the mid lane keep. They want to try and take top. At least open it up a little bit here. We're going to be going out from Hortoro. A little bit of an invade at this time. We do currently have this. We actually have the sounds going to be going out onto the ETC. They back up at this time. Going to be getting the pull out from Gogiberry. That will be a Planet Cracker coming out. They actually get the Condemn and the Stun from Vala, I do believe, onto a couple of the members there. Start to back off, though, at this time, as I don't think that they're able to chase this. Meanwhile, though, Web Weavers and Bottom did end, but here's the thing. It stacked up so much, it is going to be pushing, and there's another wave on top of that. Vala already going to be rotating down to clear that out. Not enough for a turn in on the side of either team. Fairly close for the members of Dunning Krieger Knights. As it looks like they're going to want to just push up mid a little bit, make sure that that catapult pressure is consistent and always a threat. And also, they're going to go ahead and grab this camp. 16's not achieved on the side of Dunning Krieger Knights yet, so they can't. They don't really want to take this. They do have it now, but... They're going to have to rotate across the entire map for it. It looks like they pushed up top lane. Mid lane will be having this stacked up as they want to go ahead and set the sights on, on bottom and take a keep. And this is some real aggressive play from the members of the real ultimate mosh pit. Almost every heroic is available for both teams. Mid lane is getting pushed in at this time. Warden's Cage is going to be coming out. Riptar going to be coming out as well. ETC going to be sliding in. Mosh pit not available. Leap going to be coming out, though. Mosh is up at this time. Joanna will be falling on top of the team. Goki is going to be falling as well. Vala trying to just stun this out and slow it down, but it won't be enough as mid lane has been pushed up quite a bit. Apple Eater going to get the clear on this as best as, and as quickly as they can. But that will be the bottom lane keep falling as we will also be having what looks like a potential death... I wouldn't say death push, but... That will be Sonya leaping on to Malfurion. That will be the kill. Diva going to go ahead and just try and play around this uh, nuclear option. That will be hitting the ETC but getting healed up right away. Planet Cracker going to be coming out. They just sidestep it. A little bit of damage as well. Go ahead and get the spin. Not going to be connecting and getting the kill though. And I think at this time it looks like zoning mosh. Uh, looks like at this time, ooh, we do have the majority of the members coming back from death. They're going to start to chase this. Sven not in the best spot. Ooh, we do have the Umber Bind on to a couple of members. They're getting the pull right back in as they do continue to fight this diva. Going to be a little bit low, but they get the kill on to Vala. 47% on the core of Dunning Krieger Knights as it looks like they chase off the real ultimate mosh pit for now. But they lost their Vala and I'm... Oh, the leap going to be coming in from the Sonya. We do get the Riptire coming out from the Junkrat. Not going to be getting a kill, but definitely weakening them enough to just have them back off. And it looks like they're going to go right back onto the core. And that will be game number two going over to the members of the Real Ultimate Mosh Pit. GG, well played.